Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Pro Tips and today I'm going to be talking about modules. So uh, recently I've been getting a lot of questions about modules. You know, you have your robot, but what modules should you use on that robot? And a lot of times, not only does it depend on your robot, it depends on your setup as well. So I think what I might do is I'm going to focus on the modules that top players tend to run, the ones that are in high level champion league, because this way you don't, uh, you know, use your uh, gold on a module like, uh, you know, Battleborn and you don't waste it on that and then level it up and find out that it's not really that great. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to take a look at, um, you know, these modules that I have. Yeah, I actually have uh, a few different kinds. All of them are actually available in the store. And uh, yes, I do realize that these are expensive ones, 5,000 for like the heavy armor kit, 5,000 for the thermonuclear reactor, 2,500 for fortifiers, but I'm going to try to narrow it down so that, you know, I save you resources that way. Um, another option too, actually, if you are saving up gold for, you know, those modules, uh, whenever you play, make sure that you activate your key boosters because if you save up enough, uh, you know, keys for the gold chest, you have access or you have the chance to win things like the balance unit. Um, I think there's last stand here too. Uh, let's just check this out. We have thermonuclear reactor, we have overdrives, anti-control, last stand. So a lot of these modules are actually um, really good modules. So definitely activate those key boosters when you do play and you can find it in the uh, resources uh, tab here. So make sure that you activate this when you play and quite often you get uh, these free you know when you log in every day you watch uh, those ads uh, make sure that you activate those but uh, let's take a look here at the hellburner so i do have a last stand on the hellburner actually i have a last stand on all of my robots i just realized that now but it is a really important module um, once you start facing the top uh, players in champion league uh, most times they're going to have a last stand very rare that they actually don't have that module um, there are a couple of setups where i can see it not being used but most times they will have this module so you might be thinking um, you know how much of a difference does last stand make usually when you are in a one versus one battle it actually comes down to who has a last stand and who doesn't so it is a big deal um, i would start to focus on this module uh, once you get to master league because i think that's when you're going to start uh, to notice more and more players uh, run this uh, as you go into or at least as you climb into a uh, champion league now, uh, there is one thing I also want to mention too, because I've been seeing a lot of players do this. Don't stack multiple last stands on a robot, okay? Because if you take a look at how this module works, this is a max last stand. What this means is when you lose 70% of your health, it's going to activate the last stand ability uh, where you don't take any damage for 4.5 seconds. If you were to stack three of these on a robot, it's going to activate at 90%. Okay, so you lose 10% health, it's going to activate and you're going to have that immunity for 4.5 seconds. That's how it works. So if you were to stack your last stands on a robot, it's going to activate early and when you really do need it, you're not going to have it. So you only need one of these per robot, so five in total and that should be it. I just figured I should mention this to save you guys some gold because like I said, I've seen a lot of players running multiple last stands on their robots, definitely not needed. Now the other module that I sometimes use, especially for beacon runners and you know, in some cases even tanky robots is anti-control. Now the reason why I use this on a beacon runner is because it prevents me from actually being suppressed or locked down. Okay, so if you look at the description here, lockdown and suppression, so that makes a huge difference. I also find this really effective against Typhons because if they do EMP the Hellburner, for example, it's going to flash, but I'm not going to get locked down and I can still use my advanced repair. However, the second round that they hit me, uh, depending on how long they actually wait, um, the second round I will actually be affected by it. But the first round, I find uh, the anti-control is really helpful. And the anti-control, you don't really actually need to upgrade this uh, that much. Even at level one, it's really effective. So, um, you know, if you need to save uh, gold on, you know, upgrading uh, your, or I should say silver as well, on upgrading your uh, module, the anti-control would be one module you can actually cut down on and rather put that towards a uh, last stand or something. Okay, so that is uh, anti-control. Um, I have balance unit on uh, the Hellburner here, but also I have it on the Fenrir. 
I'm just looking to see what else I have here. So balance unit you want to use on tanky robots. So that would be like, for example, the Hellburner, the Fenrir, Invader, Shell, um, possibly uh, even something like a Phantom if you, you know, need more health. Um, but what I like about the balance unit, if you take a look at the uh, stats. So at max level, it has here, it gives you 9% more health and 8% more damage. If you compare that to something like the uh, the heavy armor kit, uh, which I'm trying to find here, this is 12% more health. So this actually has more health, but um, you don't have the extra damage. So I would actually, if I had a choice, you know, if I was purchasing a module here and deciding between heavy armor kit or balance unit, I would pick balance unit uh, just because of the way that uh, you can actually get uh, both health and you can get more damage. And I think this is a better module uh, than this uh, one over here. We're going to be talking about uh, thermonuclear um, as well. Um, but yeah, that's what I would do in terms of balance unit. Uh, definitely a really good module for uh, tanks. Okay, so Fenrir, Shell, Invader, you want to go for uh, this module over here. Okay, so let's see, what other modules do we have? Cloaking unit. Okay, so cloaking unit can be good. It depends on, um, you know, which robot. It doesn't have as many uses. Um, as something like balance unit or like last stand for example but a uh, cloaking unit i tend to use on robots like uh, the scorpion and demeter there are some cases where i use it on the behemoth and i have tried it on the favnir you know it kind of helps uh, give you stealth so uh, definitely a good module to have but um, the uses are limited you know if you had to compare or if you had to choose between cloaking and balance unit i'd probably do balance unit first so we have that. Um, let me see which other. Oh, fortifiers. So fortifier is also a really good module. Only if your robot has um, like a physical shield or an energy shield or Aegis shield in this case. Okay, so the Typhon has an Aegis shield. This is going to help, uh, you know, actually boost up the shield. Both regeneration and also the um, durability bonus here. You can see if you have physical shields like with a bulwark, it's going to benefit from... Uh, fortifiers so this can be a good one only if it has a shield uh, if you put this on like an Ares or something it's not going to do anything because that's an absorber shield um, it's more energy shields um, Aegis shields and physical shields so I have it on the Typhon here we're going to be doing some gameplay with that and next up we have overdrives so in terms of attack modules um, you know for something like this I would use overdrives um, there are cases where you know, I would use thermonuclear reactors and that is more if I'm going to be using range. So for example, let's just say um, I had incinerator skull or if I had, I'm trying to think of like if there's any other kind of range, like maybe Gauss and uh, Vault, I think it is. Um, you know, anything that I want to have extra damage the minute I drop in, that is when I would use uh, thermonuclear reactors over uh, overdrives. But I think if given a choice, I would actually go for the overdrives uh, first. So in terms of the modules here, we go back to the store. Um, I would say focus on, let's see, balance unit, focus on anti-control, focus on last stand um, and overdrive. I think those are the main ones. Cloaking unit really depends on your robot. Like if you have a Scorpion or a Demeter, this could be helpful, but um, definitely overdrive, definitely last stand, uh, anti-control as well, balance unit. I think those are the main ones. Uh, that I would definitely focus on first. Okay, so I think, let's just go back here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually play a game so that you guys can see these modules um, at work and why, you know, I say you should have a last stand, for example. And uh, in the case of like cloaking unit, you can see how it actually works on something like the Demeter. But uh, yeah, let's uh, jump into a game here so that you guys can see uh, these modules at work. Okay, so we've just dropped in on Springfield map and I have started with the Hellburner first. So a couple of things I want you guys to pay attention uh, to here. When the uh, red team, when they start firing at my Hellburner, you might see it flash. And that is the anti-control at work. It means they're trying to lock me down or suppress me and the anti-control is blocking them from doing that. So let's see if I can try to uh, demonstrate that here. Let's see, we can uh, get... Is this guy gonna lock me? One guy leeched onto me, but that's not what I'm looking for here. Hold on a second. Let's 
Try to do that. <laughs> nice getting hit by missiles back there. Man, these guys are going to get our uh, beacon there by the farm. Okay, hold on a second. This Nightingale. Okay, watch my Hellbender. Let's see if it... So you see how it flashed? That is um, the anti-control at work, preventing that guy from suppressing me. Although, I think I'm going to get suppressed here. Just hold on a second. I'm actually trying to hold this beacon down because I think they're getting the farm back there. Yeah, they're going to get it. Okay, so we're going to have to uh, deal with these players here. Try to do that. Notice I'm trying to also preserve my last stand just in case. So that player did not have a last stand. This one in front of me has a last stand. My last stand has been triggered here. So I have to be careful of how I engage this player. Because I need to uh, get him down to his last stand. There we go. And we should be able to finish him off. Okay, so we actually have four beacons here. Wait, where is Red Team? They're all the way back there. Oh, this guy in front of me has cloaking. Oh, shoot. He's almost dead. Can I get him? Can I get him? Yes. Okay, so... Someone just spawned in on my left flank here. Okay, so I'm probably going to end up going down. And I think the next bot that I'll drop into will be... Let's use the uh, Typhon. Let's take out that guy. This guy is actually almost out. Man, do we have a 5 cap here? We might have a 5 cap. Okay, let me uh, make my way over to this side. We actually need to let the red team get... Um, like three beacons or something at this point. Uh, let's see, we can try to get this guy maybe, if I can EMP him. Let's get this player. Nope, he has a physical shield, he blocked me. Okay, so it looks like red team is starting to fight back, which is good because this is going to allow me to... Oh, wait. I EMP'd that Orochi. It's going to allow me to showcase all the different, um, you know, modules here. Or at least try to. I think I made him angry, guys. So you see, this is where... Oh, wait. <laughs> this is where the fortifiers actually comes into play because it gives me more of a shield and it regenerates a lot quicker as well. Whoa, I was not expecting a jumping Ares. <laughs> okay, um, just waiting for his shield to drop here. We're going to EMP him. Here we go. Let's go for this guy. Oh, jeez. Man, is he going down fast at Favnir. Let's EMP this guy. Man, I think I made him angry. You know what's kind of funny is he can't break through my Aegis. Look at that. It's regenerating so fast he can't even break through the Aegis shield. That is crazy. Mind you, he probably had cannibal reactors on that thing too. Uh, wait. This guy's going to knock my shield down. No. Oh, wait. I did EMP him. Oh, jeez. Shield is broken. There we go. He has to knock my shield down before he does damage uh, by that blast. And that should finish him off. And I still have my last stand as well. Oh, wait. Let's just heal up here. Uh, maybe I can get inside this guy's bubble. Ooh, did I EMP him? No, I didn't. I thought I EMP'd him. It's right next to him. Let me do this. Holy crap, that's close. 
Okay, so I'm going to drop in with the Demeter next. This way you guys can see the uh, cloaking unit at work. So I'm going to teleport to this guy. Let's just heal him up here. And I'm going to go... Let's face a Titan. You're going to see him fire straight at me and then probably fire above me. So you see how his targeting messed up? That is the cloaking unit. It allows me to get damage in. Again, it messed up his aim. It's one of the most annoying things to actually deal with. Let's put my shield up here. I don't think I'm going to get a chance to use at the bottom of my hangar. I think this might actually be it. In a second, let me just try to deal with this guy here. Now he's gone into a phase shift. Here we go. Um, you know what? Let me just uh, teleport to this Arthur, protect him. Let's try to heal him up. And there we go. Okay, so I think I'm going to jump into a second game here and mix up some of my modules just so that you can kind of see how they work on certain robots. Okay, so we've just dropped in on Dead City map and I have started with the invader first. So what I've done with this invader was to put uh, three heavy armor kits on here because there might be uh, some players who have heavy armor kits and uh, you aren't sure, you know, what to do with it. So what I, I typically do with, uh, you know, heavy armor kits is put it on uh, tanky robots. So whether it be like Invader, Fenrir, uh, even on the shell it could work really well. If we have an Orochi here in center. Try to deal with this guy. Uh, there's another guy. Whoop. I'm trying to heal up here. They're actually going to be getting our left side there. And I do want to jump. I don't know if... Oh man. No, wait, I got all of them. Nice. I actually wanted to jump against that one player so that I didn't jump away like that. Don't want to shoot uh, that guy's shield. There we go. Oh, man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to jump here. I was hoping I'd be able to jump. Oh! <laughs> I tried to see if I could jump. Um, you know what? I'm going to drop into my shell. We need to get another beacon fast here. We are losing a lot of... Whoa, we're going to lose that right side. Wait, how is that even possible? Are we getting... We're getting another beacon back. Trying to figure out which beacon we lost. I guess the one on the right side. Another guy just dropped in here next to me. Whoa! Well, you know what? At least I'm fighting for this one. Hopefully my teammates can go for another. They now have dropped in with three. Is there three guys here? Yep, there's three. There's also Demeter. Okay, my last stand has triggered. Let me just use that. I'm going to heal now to get extra resistance. Boom! If I can take out two guys, that would be, that would be amazing. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, actually it is. Holy shoot. We actually almost got that beacon back. <laughs> Whoa, did you guys see that? Um, okay, wait, hold on a second here. I'm going to drop in on this side with the behemoth. So typically with the behemoth or this build, I actually have thermonuclear reactors. With thermonuclear reactors, I don't need to uh, take on damage in order to uh, do that additional damage. Although this map, it's really hard to uh, use a build like this. I'm just going to lock this beacon down just to make sure we have this. I'm going to see if uh, anyone actually drops in here. Um, I guess I can move this way. You know what? Okay, I did lock uh, this guy down. I was thinking of going for another beacon on that side. There we go. I'm just locking some players down here. You know what? I'm gonna... <laughs> I might as well position myself over here so that we could take this guy out. Lock him down. There is a player behind me, but that's okay. Where is he? There's a couple of them here. 
let's just do that. I'm not going to be able to break this Arthur's shield, but at least my teammates are shooting him. Okay, that's good. Let's try to take out this uh, leech. Here we go. Lock this guy down. Maybe I can get him down to his last stand. Um, we do have their beacon. We got our home beacon back, or at least that other one. Uh, let's drop in with the hawk. So with the hawk build that I have here, I have two overdrives on this. You can always tell based on the marker on your health bar like that. Um, oh, jeez. Okay, so looks like they have a Sharunga here. I'm going to actually... Yep, we're going to lock him down. I'm actually going to move out of that 350 meter range so he can't uh, phase exile me. And uh, that did a lot of damage. He's almost out. I think he did lose a weapon there. Yep, so he is out. Let's try to lock this guy down. So he's been locked. Let me see if I... I don't know if I can lock that guy down. No, I can't. This guy has a... Uh, I have a player back there I'm trying to reach because he has a Favnir. Let's try to get this guy. There we go. This Arthur's moving into center. If he drops in here, I'm going to lock him down. Okay, so they have a uh, they have a Sharanga back there. Who has the uh, new weapons. Sharanga Bulava. Okay. Yep, he fired at me. But you know what? I locked him, and I'm not going to go forward because you want to stay out of that 350 meter range. That is his phase exile uh, range. Just uh, block here. A lot of players ask me, why do I put EQ shield on the Hawk? That's the reason why. Okay, so you can see here it's coming in handy. Let's try to do that. Okay, so I did lock him down. I'm going to go into a flight now. We're going to get him down to his last stand. Last stand has triggered. He did drop to the ground. Ah, he has a, a Demeter here to help him. And did I get him? He has a shield here, but that's not going to be up for much longer. There we go. And if it, you know, if it wasn't for that EQ shield, I probably wouldn't be, uh, have been able to take that guy out. I'm just waiting... I'm going to try to lock this guy in place. It's going to flight here. Trying to uh, take out this guy just in case he gets that beacon. There we go. I'm going to ditch this and drop in with the uh, Fenrir. So this Fenrir has, I believe, balance unit on here. So let's get onto this beacon. And this is uh, not only going to allow me to get more health uh, from that module, but also more damage uh, as well. So it works really nice on uh, tanky robots. But that's why I say, you know, if you have gold and you are deciding whether you should go heavy armor kit or balance unit, my opinion, go for balance unit because it actually offers you the best of both worlds. This guy is going to be, uh, yep, he's uh, almost down to his last stand. You know what? I'm going to get actually onto this beacon here just in case. His shield's going to be dropping here soon. He's trying to escape there. But we should have him. What I can always do is uh, I'm going to ditch this. We're going to drop in with this. Just to protect our beacons. I think that's going to be it. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be it. And it looks like we were up against a duo squad here too. Can I steal it? Oh my gosh, I totally stole that one. It's what I do best, guys. <laughs> I think that's a lost bot. So yeah, really good game. Actually showcasing the different, uh, you know, modules on my bots here. So hopefully you can see, you know, how these modules work on certain bots. And what I can do here is show you what modules I have on this behemoth. So I do have three thermonuclear reactors on here. And the reason why I use thermonuclear reactors over overdrives uh, for one is because of the weapon range. And also because I don't need to take on damage to do that additional damage. So with thermonuclear reactors, when you drop in, uh, if it's maxed out, you get an additional 10% more damage. Uh, in the case of overdrives, 
Yes, it does do more damage, but that is only uh, if you take on damage and you trigger those overdrives. Uh, but there is a bit of risk uh, involved with that. You know, it's like high risk, high reward. So if you end up uh, getting killed in the process, you're obviously not going to end up uh, doing that additional damage. This way you are ensured you're going to do that additional damage the minute you drop in. So um, I prefer this kind of uh, build for like sniper builds, even like a Typhon with uh, Pulsars or even Wasp. I prefer actually running uh, thermonuclear reactors over the overdrives. Now, the other change I made was to the invader. So I actually have three heavy armor kits on here and I decided to use it because I know there's going to be some players who might have actually won uh, heavy armor kits from like the black market or events. And, um, you know, what I would do with that is to use your heavy armor kits on your tanky robots. So running three, like, for example, on the invader works really well. Uh, even three on the Fenrir works really well too. So, uh, you know, those are just other options uh, you can use uh, those modules on. Um, now, I didn't include something like a Nitro unit uh, because uh, obviously you can't purchase Nitro units yet. Uh, but if you do have Nitro units, what you can use uh, them for is uh, the Loki and, uh, you know, the Orochi and also possibly the Favnia if you have it. Uh, those are the robots I found the Nitro units to work really well with. If you don't have those robots in, I wouldn't level up the nitro units uh, at this point uh, if you have the nuclear amplifier which is uh, this module over here let me just uh, go to the store or at least the inventory this one over here so this is typically what i would use to replace like overdrives but you only want to use one okay because uh, the way that this works is so you can actually stack uh, three of these but uh, what it does is it just allows you to reach this uh, effect limit quicker so you don't really need to reach it quicker because you can actually hit it pretty quickly already with just one so um, i would in this case if i had to use um, that module on this build i would just use one okay so you just use one like that uh, if i was to use it on this kind of build here i would just use one as well so only it's kind of like last stand Okay, you don't want to use multiples, just use one. And I think that pretty much covers all the modules in the game right now. But I did want to focus on the ones that you can purchase because not everyone will have like Nitro units or the nuclear amplifier. And, you know, I think that pretty much covers everything. And if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely check out the rest of this pro tip series by going to playlists and finding pro tips. So we have eight videos here, but you know, how to get more damage, when to drop your titans, how to make gold fast, how to make more silver, for example. Definitely check out the rest of the series, and I think that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching, and until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.